good morning dear students i am subramanya wires lecturer in biology alpha university college kr nagar mysore district speaking i welcome you all to my class in this class i am going to discuss some of the topics from the chapter reproduction in organisms 12th standard ncert second pc biology karnataka state in this chapter in your neat examination you can expect at least one question whereas in your theory examination you can expect expect two to three marks questions from this chapter and this is quite interesting chapter and uh, we have the topics like life span reproduction reproduction types asexual reproduction sexual reproduction this chapter first let me take up the life span to discuss children all of you know the organism if it has to come into life come into existence it has to take birth it has to be born so the organism if it has to come to life it has to be born so that's the birth but okay and after birth organism continues to live for certain period of time it will continue to live for certain period of time and then it will die that is death no organism is immortal no organism can escape death except few cellular organisms that i am going to tell you discuss in the next chapter so when i use the word death death may occur because of accident predation infection or anything like that so that's because of these factors or not natural is not natural that so here i'm speaking about the natural that a natural that is that one the organism grows develops grows reproduces and later on in the final phases of the life cycle of the animal or any organism to that matter the organs loses their vitality visual physiological efficiency and finally they will reach the stage of senility and die so this type of death is a natural death so natural death the word natural is very important when you use the word when you have to explain a life span so the duration of time duration of time between birth to the natural birth we call that as a life span life span so when we consider this life span is that all organisms do have same life life span no different organisms do have different life span it is quite interesting to take examples of a few animals for example may fly may fly will you just for 24 hours may fly lives for 24 hours whereas pinus tree pinus longa eva pinus longa eva of north america has lived more than 4800 years you see why the disparity is there in the duration of life span students you may all be wondering what is the reason for this so if we make a brief analysis of the factors which may influence the life span there are many things in biological studies we have to consider evolutionary history level of complexity of the body of the organism adaptation habitat 
physiology, genetic factors, many things are there. So a lot of variation is there in lifespan of the organisms. And next question is that, is there any relationship between the size and the lifespan of the animal? So let us consider two animals. To know interesting features of the lifespan to animals, I consider crow. It's having a lifespan of 15 years. And a parrot. Parrot is having a lifespan of 140 years. Again, there's a wide difference. There's a wide disparity in the lifespan of the animals, though they do have almost the same size. So there is no correlation between the size of the lifespan. Let us consider another one example from the plants. You consider mango tree. Mango tree is having a lifespan of around 300 years. And people tree. People tree is having a lifespan of 1,500 years. Children, I'm considering those examples which are given in your textbook, which are very important. Wherein the questions will be set based upon the examples given and the content of the information present in your textbook. So we focus on the content of textbook in our classes. So there is no correlation between the size of the organism to the lifespan. And it is not that all organisms do have the same lifespan. Lifespan varies from a day, few days to few thousand years. So going back to the lifespan, <coughs> definition of the lifespan, like from birth to the death, if all organisms die, then how come this wide variety of organisms are still present over the planet Earth? Definitely the answer is reproduction. Answer is reproduction. In the life cycle of the birth, growth, reproduction and death, the event of reproduction is very important. If an organism, if an animal takes a step ahead, it's for two purposes, that's for the food and the reproduction. So reproduction is a biological process, definitely. A reproduction is a biological process of production of young ones of its own kind. The organism produces young ones of its own kind by the process of reproduction. So we use the word offspring to the young ones. Or progenies for the group of young ones. Production of progenies, production of offspring of its own kind. For example, let us consider the example, I mean, let us consider the examples which are which we are familiar with. Human beings give birth to babies. Dog gives birth to puppies and a cat gives birth to kittens. Vice versa is not definitely possible. So the organism, the animal or a plant, or any other organism to that matter concerned, it can give birth or reproduce the young ones of its own kind. Okay? So that's the definition for the reproduction. They may ask you one last question in your examination, what is reproduction? Reproduction is a biological process of production of young ones of their own kind. The reproduction enables the organism to continue its species. So I may not live for another 10,000 years, but I am survived by my children. My children are survived by their children. Though I may not be living, the human species will survive. So reproduction enables continuity of species. Okay? What is reproduction? Uh, write the significance of reproduction. Two mass question. Right? Reproduction enables continuity of species. So, considering this reproduction, is that all the organism reproduces in the same way? Is the mechanism of reproduction is similar in these wide varieties of the organism? No, definitely. The organisms do have different methods of reproduction. 
based upon the habitat, genetic factors, physiology, evolutionary history, adaptation, the organism shows different patterns, mechanisms in reproduction. So let us try to analyze what are those types of reproduction. Okay, so reproduction majorly is categorized into two varieties. That is one asexual reproduction and second one is a sexual reproduction. Asexual and sexual reproduction. So in your examination, they may ask you a question to write the difference between asexual and sexual reproduction. Okay, as per your syllabus and the content of your textbook, we have to study in a detail asexual reproduction and we have been given certain examples which we need to consider and we have to take those examples and the different uh, plants, animals have been given. You have to remember certain diagrams so that, that I'm going to discuss in the next class. So let us have a gross idea about the differences from the differences in sexual to asexual reproduction. So I write asexual, asexual reproduction here. Okay, and sexual reproduction, sexual reproduction here. Right, a asexual reproduction is a reproduction where only one parent takes part in a reproduction. Only one parent. So because it is also called as a uniparental reproduction. One parent is involved. I'm going to give you examples. Just you know the difference in this class. When I take up a sexual reproduction for the detailed discussion, you are going to understand that. Okay? Only one parent is involved, so it is also called as a uniparental reproduction. Why asexual reproduction is referred as uniparental reproduction? Because there is only one parent involved, so it is called uniparental reproduction. And sexual reproduction involves two parents of opposite sex. Two parents, two parents of opposite sex. Here, there is an involvement of formation of gametes. As in case of animals, there's an involvement of sperm, which is produced by the male parent, and ova, which is produced by the female parent. So, gamete formation is there. Gamete formation is involved. Here, no gamete formation. Here, no gamete formation. Here, gamete formation is involved here, there is no gamete formation. Okay, you got the first difference. Sorry. And I gave you the second difference. And another one very important difference from asexual reproduction to sexual reproduction is that in asexual reproduction, the offsprings born, offsprings, offsprings formed are identical to each other. They are similar, identical to each other. As because they are identical to each other, we are going to understand the reason why they are identical genetically, genetically to each other. In the next class, they are identical to each other, so because they are called clones. Okay? Of springs, of springs are, are identical. Identical, so they are called as clones. Here, are the offsprings formed, born or hatched out or anything like that. Here, are the offsprings formed are not identical to each other. They show variations. Okay, variations. Offsprings are not identical and show variations. Okay, so what are these variations? You consider a rose plant. You cut the twigs oh, okay. of the rose plant and plant. Uh, you, you, you cut the twigs from the rose plant. You are going to take out 10 twigs and you plant those 10 twigs. All the rose plants which are growing as a new plants are identical among themselves but also to their, to their parents. So 
you know, offsprings are identical to each other as well they are identical to their parents. But whereas you, you consider, uh, consider your brother, you consider your sister, you siblings are born, brothers, sisters are born to same parents, but still you show differences among yourselves. So that is variation. So variations are seen among the offspring, their variations are not seen. Okay, children. So in your examination, write the differences between sexual and asexual reproduction with examples. We are going to consider examples in the next class. Right, it's clear. So let me analyze so what are the questions which we can expect in your examination based upon the discussion what we have made. I told you already write the difference between sexual and asexual reproduction. The reason why the offsprings born are identical to each other that you'll understand in your next class. I'm going to explain. Or they may ask you what are clones, genetically identical offsprings born through the process of asexual reproduction are called clones. What are clones? Genetically identical individuals born by the process of asexual reproduction are called clones. Okay? So then, what is lifespan? You have an answer with you. What is reproduction? Write the significance of reproduction. You have an answer with you. And mention two types of reproduction. You know, the asexual and sexual reproduction, that is a very common thing. A, a, a very simple question that may not be there in your examination. Okay? So, in this class, we have understood the fundamentals of reproduction in the organisms. Next class, to begin with, I'm going to consider asexual reproduction and give you some examples. What are the asexual reproductive structures? What are the different patterns of asexual reproduction in different organisms? And further, next class, I'm going to explain the sexual reproduction, the basis of sexual reproduction, gamete formation, the process of gamete formation, and so on. So students, I hope that you have enjoyed this class. Thank you all for listening to me. I will come back in my next class. The next class, the episode 2 of the same chapter. Thank you all.